it comes automatically with your RStudio. And the persistent disk is environment and user specific. And I'm, by that, I mean that only you, the user, can see the files in your environment, in your um, persistent disk. Um, and the environment is attached to your RStudio. So let's say you created a file in Jupyter Notebook. You cannot see it in RStudio environment. Those are two different environments. And there's a way for you to transfer data back and forth. And I, I will show you later how you can do that. The persistent disk is cost about $4 a month and you can delete it. But when you do that, you also delete all the files that are in it. And so the next option that you have is the workspace bucket, which we actually recommend. And this is provided by Google. So it's a Google Cloud Storage and the, um, the name of it typically looks like GS uh, slash blah, blah, blah. And this is a, a storage that is attached to your workspace. So when you create the workspace, it comes with it. And so that means that if you share the workspace with other people, they can also see and access the files in it. The good thing with that is that you can copy data. You can copy data between different workspaces as long as they're the same tier. So you can copy data between a registered tier workspace and another registered tier workspace. And the same for control tier. It is cheaper than the persistent disk. I think it's just a few cents a month. And when you save files there, they're permanently there, even if you delete your persistent disk, right? So we recommend that you, you save data on, on the, the workspace bucket as you work. And because it's attached to the workspace, you can save a file that you've created in our studio environment into the workspace bucket and save a file that you created, let's say in Jupyter environment into the workspace bucket, and then read that back into whichever environment you want. And I will show you again how that works later on. Um, next. Okay, so here, I hope you can see everything. Um, here is a big picture idea of how storage works in a researcher workbench. You can, yes, there you go. Um, so you can save and write data to and from your persistent disk with just your simple R function. So you can use read CSV, write CSV, read Excel, or save if it's a plot, um, no problem. But when it comes to saving and writing data to and from the bucket, you need to go through the persistent disk. So you cannot directly access um, the bucket from, let's say, your uh, CSV file. You have to go through the PD. And let's say, so what I mean by that is if you use, for example, um, a CS, write CSV and then you give your bucket location, GS, blah, 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 this will not work. And the same thing is if you just use GSUtil on the um, on the persistent disk root folder, it will not work as well. You have to go through. Um, you have to. The persistent disk is a link between your R Studio and the bucket. Next, please. Okay. So, talking about saving data um, to and from the bucket. If you want to save data to the bucket, you first have to save the data from your analysis file into the persistent disk using your regular function, like um, write CSV, write Excel. And then if you want, and then the next step is to read that from the persistent disk into the bucket using GSUtil. And to do the reverse thing, do the reverse saving, meaning you get you want to get your data from the bucket into the R Studio, you have to go through the persistent disk. So you save your data, um, you read the data into the persistent disk using just util, and then from the persistent disk into your analysis file using R. So the main thing to keep in mind is that you have to use your normal R function or Python, if it was a Python notebook, when you want to deal with data between your R studio and the persistent disk. And then when it's between the persistent disk and the bucket, then you have to use the Google storage command. In this instance, yes, you tell. So this is high level, um, the principles for storage. And then I think it will be clearer when we start um, demoing in the R studio. So with that, Sam, I'm going to share my screen. 
I hope everyone can see my screen right now. And this is um, our studio. And I'm going to start um, by creating an environment. So the, you open your workspace and then let's say you wanna spin an R studio environment. Um, let's use that one. So the first thing you can do is just click on the R here, or you can also go, go here, analysis, choose an app, and then click on R studio and next, and it will just pop the same pane for you. And unlike Jupyter Notebook, you cannot change your computer profile as of now. Um, but you can also automatically delete your application, your persistence is after a certain time. So this is helpful if you know that you're not going to be using this environment every day um, and then you want to save money, you can get into the habit of saving your the files that you want to keep into the bucket and then have the persistent disk be deleted every X days. And then once you do that, you can click on start and then you will see um, a circle, a red circle spinning. I won't do that here, but then once it's, once it's done creating, it'll take a couple, a few minutes. Um, and then once it's done created, it'll be pretty clear that it's done. And again, we have research support articles for everything that I'm talking about with screenshots and everything. So feel free to refer to that. When it's done, what you will see is, um, is the R now will have like a green circle here. And that means that your environment is ready to use. And you can click on this um, and then click on open, open R Studio. Okay, so this is the interface. It looks exactly like the desktop application. Um, and you've got a couple of um, win uh, windows here. You have the console. You can, this is why you can basically, um, you can just type one, one line of code and um, it will give you the result right away. So let's say we want to find the, the data set variable. We can just type this and add, I tap enter and then it gives you the data set variable. Well, this is helpful if you wanna you know, write one line of code and check something really quickly. But if you're trying to run a full analysis, that's not gonna be you know, really um, helpful. You also have a terminal. Uh, I think by default it's bash. So you can, um, let's say I wanna check what is the, the root folder of um, this, workspace or this environment and it's home R Studio. this is your persistent disk. Um, but you don't have to to know Bash. If you want to use that, our research support article has um, the comments that you can use to even save file in your bucket or see your bucket. But if you just type R um, and type enter, it will change it into R and you can just use your regular R code um, to work here. But again, if you want to run a full analysis, that's not your best bet. You, you will have to create files. So to create a file, you can just click on the plus here, or you can click on file, new file. And there are multiple options. You, you see you can even create SQL scripts or Python scripts, but today we'll focus on R. Um, you can create an R scripts and the extension will be .R. Sometimes it is capitalized, sometimes it's not, doesn't make a difference. And this is why you can just write our code, right? Um, I'm gonna copy paste code that I had here before. Uh, you can just run that. This is helpful if you want to write a bunch of functions that do different things. And then you can call the R script into another file. So you can just call the functions and not the whole code. Um, and to run here, if I click here and I just click run, it will just run the last, like wherever my cursor is. I know there's, you can set it up so that if you click run, it runs the whole chunk, but by default, this is how it is. So to run here, you just have to select whatever code you want to run. I just did control A and then run, then it will run the whole thing. Um, and this is gonna just show us counts data um, over 20. Now, again, this is better than, you know, the terminal, the console, but if you want to have a nicely organized code, your best bet is to create a .rnd file, a markdown file. 
And here I'll just give it a name of this hour. Um, and then the default output will be HTML. I'll just leave it as is. Click OK. Um, and I need to save it because it's not saved yet. I need to do either Control S or File um, Save. I'll just name it Office Hours. Hour. Um, save. And the file is here. So this is actually your persistent disk. This is where when you create files um, or you save files, sorry, to your persistent disk, this is where it goes. This is your home um, slash RStudio root folder. And a markdown document in R, and R is pretty good with documentation. Basically, if you Google anything, it will give you a lot of documentation. Um, so this site will tell you how you can, you know, nicely format it so when you need at the end, it's nice and, 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 and pretty. Um, but anything that is between the um, backward slash, the three backward slashes, and has all in curly bracket, that's why you write your code. It can just be R, as long as it's R in it, it's gonna work. Um, and you can just write your code. So let's just write something here. Um, actually, I think, yes, this is just one of this. Um, this is like a data set that is attached to our base, so I don't need to call it or anything. And we have this. And you can write the description of what the cell is here, but you don't have to. You can just, as long as this R is going to work. Um, yeah, so that is how you can create a file. Now, you can also um, import a file from um, another workspace into your R Studio environment. So, Let's say I want to copy um, into my environment the, the file that was published as a featured workspace um, in how to get started with to share data. So this gives you, um, it's, it's really like this file, but for our studio. So to copy this, I can just do click on here um, and copy to another workspace. And it will show me all the workspaces are all in the same tier. And this is RT, so you will need to copy it to another RT workspace. So I'll click on my office hour, um, copy notebook, and I can go to the copy notebook. Um, and it should open. Um, Yes, it's right here. And then you can just open it. And then you can, it's right here. You can start, you know, exploring it. So that's another option that you have. Okay, we're done with creating files and importing files. Now collecting data. Let's delete all of that. And by the way, to add a new chunk of, of, of code to add this, you can just type, Type that, or you can click here, plus add chunk, or you can do Control Alt I, and it'll add a chunk. Just make sure there's space between the chunks. Um, there's there's a variety of ways of doing it. So we want to um, get data from the cohort builder and for the data from the data set builder. So how do we do this? It's going to be exactly the same as. Um, with Jupyter Notebook with a tiny difference. So let's go here. Okay, so you create a core just like you you do usually. You create your data set. I've already created a data set here with the basic, so I'm just gonna use that. Um, and I just want the person ID. I will not do preview because I don't want to show row level data. But then you just click Analyze. Um, you click on R. And that's what the difference is. You cannot export directly the code into your, your notebook. Um, for our studio, you need to copy the code here and then paste it into your, your R file. So it's pretty simple. Just copy and paste it. And there's your code. And then you can just run it and do your analysis with it. You can also, of course, 
Oh, no one back here. I just closed this one. Um, you can also, of course, write your own query. So I will copy paste our previous query here um, and then run it. So I wrote this query to be aggregated with you know counts over 20. So we'll use that to work um, to show examples. And this is what that is. Um, let's do a quick simple plot that we can use later because you can save CSV files and you can save plots. You can save all kinds of data in the PD and in the, the bucket. So let's do a simple plot um, using ggplot, which is the standard, um, a pretty, a very nice library for um, plus in R. Um, library, ggplot field. And let's use our visits DF. Um, sometimes the the integer columns are a bit funky, so I like to but just you know make sure it's an integer before I work with it with ggplot. And then let's run this. Also, if you just want to run one line in the chunk, if you click here, it's gonna run everything. But if you just want to run one line, you can just click next to the line and do control enter and just run that line. Um so ggplot and then our visits df. And then we want our x-axis to be the count. And then y will be visit type. Um, and then we'll do, since it's already count data, we'll do geom column. And then let's make it a nice forest green. Okay. Um, oops. So yes, here's our plot. And you, you notice that um, whatever variable we create and run, they appear here, whether it's a function or just data appears here. Okay. So we have our plus, let's, let's put it into a variable. Um, there's a plot. So now we have, oops, I don't know everything. Now we have this plot here. Okay, now let's try to save and uh, to play with storage here. Let's um, save our our CSV data, our account data into a CSV file. Also, we can save the um, the plot. So in our studio. Uh, you have environment variables already there for you. So you don't have to try and figure out what is the name of my book is DS dot dot blah, blah, blah. You don't have to think about it. Just know the environment variable. Same for the data set version and same for, for a bunch of things. But how, how can you find out um, what are those variable names? We can just use sys dot get environment um, and it will show you everything, uh, including the value. So home will be, you know, your persistent disk. So if you want to, so you need to call home as your variable. Um, and then you got, of course, workspace CDR, workspace bucket, which we're going to use later on. And I'm going to use this one too. Okay. So we'll, we'll name home our uh, root folder, which is, the persistent disk, oops. And remember the name is home. And um, so there it is. And our bucket also, it's bucket and it's workspace bucket. Okay. Um, okay, so we have our variables ready. And let's try and save um, 
and write data, write the CSV data into our persistent disk. So we can just use write CSV. Um, it is visits that df and let's call it visit.csv. Um, uh, oh, I need type reverse, sorry, library type reverse. Yes. Um, Um, so what just happened, I saved it and now you see it here. So it went to the persistent disk. If you don't see it here, then you haven't saved it in your persistent disk. Another way to check uh, all the files in your persistent disk is just to do list in R, just uh, list files, I think, yeah, list files. And if you just run that, it will give you all the files. So you must see it here. That means that you've saved it to your persistent disk, okay? Now let's see, let's just read it back. Yeah, so read CSV. Um, and the same file, and it should just read it back. Okay. Um. Let's try to save our plot also to the persistence disk. Um, you, there's a bunch of ways to save plots into, um, to save plots with R. You can use ggsave, you can use um, GR device, which is a library that has options to save. We just use ggsave today. Um, so ggsave, we called it mm, visit plot, yes. Um, actually, let's just do visit plot that JPEG. Um, and then this should work. Um, so GG save by default will save the last plot. So it, it knows that the last plot is visit plot, so I don't need to, to specify it. But if I wanted to say specify, I could just do plot equals and then the, the, the name of my plot. So it is in my persistent disk as well. And if I if I rerun list files, it should be there as well. Okay. Now um second. Yeah, let, let's say I wanna try something. Let's say let's try to write CSV. Um on and let, let me try to write my file directly into the bucket and see what we get. But right, let's let's formulate a bucket command. I have something here that I would just copy. And file name will be hmm. My visits at CNC. Let's see what we get. Oh, it's just bucket. Okay. So I want to write my file into this. And I'm trying, I'm going to use. Um, Actually, by says it only takes the name and the visit data frame. So let's do that. Um, and mm, yes, bucket here. Okay. If you try to write directly to the bucket, um, this is the error that you get because you can't access the bucket directly, like I said. So you will get an error. So in order to change that, you need to go through the um, the persistent disk. And we'll, 
I'll show you that later. Now let's try and um, save our data into the bucket now. So I'm copying paste, pasting code that I had before, and this will be visit CSV. Um, and I'm constructing a I'm constructing a file path to my bucket where I want the notebook to be. So I want the the CSV file to be under the notebook folder in my bucket. So in R, I can use system um, and I can construct a gsutil command because, so gsutil is a command native to Google Cloud, but because we're still in the R notebook, we need to wrap it in R code so that basically the translation happens. So we can do gsutil copy um let's just do this one. And I can just show you what that looks like before the system. So the command looks like copy um. my file to the bucket under notebooks. Right, so, cup, so grab my file from the persistent disk and put it into the bucket. Now let's put the system around it. And it's successfully completed. So we didn't try to copy directly, you know, um, from the notebook into the bucket. We went through the persistent disk. Now let's check our bucket to see that it's there. So to check, you can just do gsutil list and you can just list what's in your bucket um under the notebooks and we have it there and we can do the same thing with the plot the plot is already in the persistence disk so we can just grab it and also save it into the Let's try it into the, the bucket. So copy some visit plot dot jpeg mm. Separated following. Something is wrong with G. Okay. Copy visit log that JPEG into the bucket. Oh, I need it to separate it. Hopefully it works now. Okay. So it's in the bucket now. And if we ran again, list. It's there. So this is how you can save your data into the bucket. And then to read it back, you just do the reverse. Remember how our little um, slide, you read it from the bucket into the persistent disk, and then you can read it back into the notebook. So let's try and do that. So we want to copy now. Yes, let's do this comment here. 
copy um, from the bucket, notebook, Let me print this to see what it looks like to make sure it's the correct command. Okay, copy from the bucket this file into, so this means just the current directory of my notebook. So that should work. Okay. So we read it back and now we can use read CSV to read it back um, into the notebook. And the same applies for any file that you have in the bucket. Um, another thing that you may want to do is let's say you have saved the file in your Jupyter environment and you're trying to, to read it into RStudio or vice versa. So I actually did this. Um, I created um I created a file like account CNZ file from Jupyter notebook it's just accounts of race and data and then I saved it into the persistent disk first and then from the persistent disk into the bucket and um it's called race data from Jupyter now let's try and read it back into our studio. So when we listed, yeah, when we listed the files in the bucket, it's right here. So now all we have to do is to copy it into our environment because it's not here right now, it's now in our PD. We want to put it into the PD, then we can grab it. Okay, so we can just do the same thing that we did here. Um, So let me show you the command because when, when you look at what you're asking the system to do, it makes sense why it's the way it is. So copy the copy um, the data that is right here into my current directory. And now we can wrap it with system. System is basically execute that command. And then now we have it here and you can read it. So race DF with your regular read CSV. Um, and let's just run this. And then this is our DF. Um, and now it is in your environment variables, your, your R environment. So this is an easy way. You can also do the same with Jupyter. All the files that you have saved in the in the workspace here, you can also access them through Jupyter Notebook. So this is um this is high level R Studio. Um, to kind of really summarize it for you. And again, feel free to refer to our articles or to this video. Uh, we talked about how to create a new file in RStudio. First, we spin an environment, um, how to create a file, how to import a file from another workspace. And we talked about how you import code, um, a query from the data set builder. You would just have to copy and paste it here. You can now directly import. You can also write your own query. And then when you save your data and plots, um, how you can, um, manage the, the file so you can save it in your persistent disk freely, save it and read it with just your regular R functions. But then when you want to go to the bucket, you have to go through the persistent disk and grab files from there. And you have to use gsutil to do that. Um, and then we also talked about if you want to transfer files from another environment in the same workspace, you can do that through the workspace bucket. So once you have all your files that you want saved in your workspace bucket, um, and you're not going to use the the workspace for a while, you can go ahead and um, you know delete your environment. So it'll delete um, you'll delete all the files that are not in the bucket and save you a bunch of money per month. Um, and also, you notice that your notebooks are all under 
um, notebook folder in the bucket. So those are permanent there, even if you delete your environment. And yeah, so I hope that was helpful. And um, if you have any questions, I can answer them for you now. Thanks, Amon. So if you do have questions, feel free to um, go ahead and come off mute or you can raise your virtual hand and we will take them in the order that they were received. Um, we have two questions in the chat, Amon, recently. Are you able to view files in Google Bucket visually, not through code? Yes, you can view the files in Google Bucket. So if you go to um, your workspace, um, if you go to about, my screen, <laughs> about, and then you click here, browse file in Google platform, um, you can see the file there. Um, yeah. Now, and, I, I, I yes. just want to make it clear you cannot interact with the files yes. from here. Um, so if you're trying to download that file or if you're trying to um, do other, like copy that file, you can't do that there. You'll get a permissions error um, and that is intentional. Um, can we can we select which R version we wish to work with? There's a default R version that comes with the bucket, uh, with the workspace and the environment. I'm not sure that you can change that. You can you can install different versions of packages because when, when you do install packages, there's an option to specify the version. You can do that if that's helpful. Um, Yvonne asked if we can install a specific um, SIM and R package. Yeah, you can just, just the regular way that you install packages, just install packages and type your package name in there. Um, what are what was specifically done to produce the figure? Um, I will upload this recording to go back, but Amon might be able to show you real quickly. Oh, okay. So I'll just use the ggplot library. And ggplot, um, if you just Google ggplot cheat sheet or ggplot, they have a very good documentation on how to use it. But um, after creating my account data, sometimes you don't even have to create account data, but after creating my account data, I just uh, input it into the ggplot function. And this is where I define my X and Y um, axis. And then I determine whether I want it to be what I want it to be. So I want it to be broad plus, but because I already have counts, I can just do counts, do column, call them, sorry, but you've got, um, Geom points, there's many um, ways that you can do the plot. So yeah, just did you um, plot, it's helpful. A follow-up question to this, because that might be nice to see, is how to export plots to your own desktop or computer? You mean you want to download the plus in your computer? Yes, just make sure that you've got, um, you've, you've got them aggregated as according to our policies, but once that, that's done, so here I have it in my um, persistent disk, I can actually do, click on it, and in the more here, I can export, and it'll go into my computer. Yeah, thanks, Amon. I do want to highlight what she said, make sure that um, if you're going to disseminate this information, it is in compliance with our policy. Um, will this work for CSV files? If your CSV file contains participant level data, you cannot download that yes. information. You will trigger an egress. So please do not do that. <laughs> um, and so even if you, I, I do think this is a, a good opportunity. Even if you obscure the person ID column, that's still, but you have a bunch of rows, that's still participant level data. So you may not download that. Yeah, if your CSV file looks like this, mm -hmm then yes, you can you can show that, you can download that. Yeah. And if you have questions on that policy, feel free to email us prior to download. We'd be we'd love to help you and assist you with that before that. Uh, the system will make a judgment, correct? Um, yes and no, so yes. But we ask that you as the researcher, part of the data user code of conduct, also make that judgment call. These are great questions. 
Does that egress message also happen if it's in a different file format? It can, yes. If the file is incredibly large, it could potentially trigger an egress. Okay. We actually have an article on egress policy, and I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, but if you have questions or you do trigger an egress, um, our security team will be in contact with you, and you can give them information relevant to that event. Yes, these are co the co recording. I, I apologize, I started this recording a little bit late, but I think that the meat of our presentation today, I did capture. So I will post that on our user support hub within the next week. It will be under the video section um, and then office hour presentations. It'll also be housed on our um, YouTube channel as well. Any other questions for Amon while we have her? Um, okay. Yes, I can provide a link to the location for the video section as well. There you go. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad it was helpful. Oh, that's a great question, Samuel. I know there are featured workspaces, but are there recordings working with survey data? Um, that's a wonderful question. We have one from um, a while ago, but we are actually going to be talking with our survey team about doing another office hours specifically centered around survey data. We've had some updates and I think that would be a great topic to explore. So more to come on that. Okay. Well, if there's no other questions, thank you, Amon, for that presentation. And thank you all for being here today as well. Our next office hours is going to be drop-in office hours, which will happen on Tuesday. Um, I am currently in the process of updating some of our Zoom links. So if you've noticed you've tried to, to, to access that Zoom link for registration, I will have our communications team send out a new email with the new Zoom link starting next week. Um, but we're still hosting office hours. And then our new user orientation will be in a couple weeks as well. So if you have colleagues that are interested in using the researcher workbench, but prior to getting a researcher workbench account want to learn more, that would be another wonderful opportunity. Um, and then do you know when the new data will be released? Um, in terms of the curated data repository, the next version release, um, we do not have a timeline on that, but we will update you all when we do have more information. The new section of the user support hub, um, we will post information then. Well, thank you all. I'll give you guys some time back. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next time.